Hey everyone, welcome back to the Rails Foundation series. It feels good to say that. Um, so if you haven't uh, checked out uh, you know, the episode where I talk about the relevancy of Rails, please check that out. Um, and I'll have a link in the description below. Um, but if you have, then let's get started. So uh, in this episode, what we're going to be doing is, you know, we're going to upgrade our uh, Rails app. And if you're following along from this point, uh, you know, this is, uh, we have a, an example project up and it's open sourced. Uh, we have it on GitLab and on GitHub. So you can clone whichever one you like to get, uh, to get, you know, to start from this point onwards. Um, and basically what we're going to be doing is we need to upgrade our Rails app uh, to Rails 5.2 because that's going to have all the versions, all the you know features that we're going to focus on in this series and uh, the upcoming series, which is Rails Intermediate. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about what we're going to be covering in this series. Uh, the, you know, until the end, it's going to be we're going to finish off Rails Foundation so we can move on to Rails Intermediate. Um, in the Rails Foundation, uh, you know, what we're going to be covering is, you know, we're going to upgrade a legacy app. That's number one. We're going to, you know, do something in the seed file. Um, you know, we're going to realize why uh, very soon, uh, as soon as we clone down the project and uh, and try to get started with it. Having a, a legacy project to work with is a, a blessing in disguise because, you know, we have a real situation here that we need to upgrade. Um, and, you know, the strategy here is that we, we're going to first upgrade to the latest uh, 4.2 stable release, uh, uh, which is 4.2.10. And then basically we're going to see where we're at in terms of the app. We're going to try to get the app to boot up first. And then, uh, we're going to think about, you know, how we're going to uh, upgrade over into Rails 5.2. So there is this cool tool over here that allows us to kind of like choose where we're at. So we're going to be at uh, 4.2.10 and then we're going to upgrade to 5.2.1 and we can click view diff and it'll show us all the things we're going to need to upgrade uh, ourselves, like all the things we're going to need to change. Um, and I'm sure there's a tool out there that automates all this stuff, but I really want to do this by hand so we know exactly, you know, what needs to happen um, in order to get everything up and running um, you know, in basically we're, what we're doing is, uh, you know, this thing is like two years ago, like you can, okay, a year ago. And, you know, that's forever in web development uh, year. Uh, so, you know, like if it's dog year, it's like one year to seven, right? This is like one to 50, you know? So what we want to do is we want to bring our project into the modern days, uh, you know, with all the things where we're going to want to cover. Um, so let's start. Uh, so as soon as we clone down the project, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try and run um, bundle. So let's try that out. So I'm going to head over here. Let me um, enlarge the text a little bit. So you can see here, I've already kind of like done that. So if I run bundle, you're going to get this error because the dependencies are all out of date and they're all not resolved and, you know, whatever. It's just nothing is working. So what do we do? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change this over here to 4.2.10 uh, and it's generally a good idea to create a feature branch. Sorry, git flow, feature, start, upgrade rails, git status. All right, we're good. So now we're gonna do bundle update. So this is gonna up update all of our dependencies to the modern days. Well, at least uh, in terms of 4.2, uh, you know, we gotta be able to walk before we can run. So we need to, you make sure that 4.2 works and everything's working in our app before we can actually make the jump to 5.2. Um, and then basically, uh, now if we try to do a Rails S to start the app, we're probably going to get some kind of failure uh, or not. Uh, and then if we head to the app, sorry, localhost 3000, we're going to run into an error that the database does not exist. Um, and so what we need to do is we need to configure the config and then the database dot yaml over here so i'm going to change this to zach's siri i don't know how you guys have your database uh set up but i'm using homebrew and it uses the the default username of the user so my username for this computer is zach siri so i'm just going to use that for this username here and then what we need to do is we need to stop the app and we need to run rake db setup so this is going to set up our database uh for development uh, and basically now we can start Rails S. Um, this should be okay. 
All right, so we should be able to hit our app. So there it is. Uh, it's a basic blogging app. So we can click sign in, we can click sign up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a admin user in the console. Uh, and then, you know, just so that we have, um, you know, a starting point for our user. So um, if you uh, don't remember, you can go and check out um, the previous episodes, you know, like how, you know, we got to this point. Uh, if you haven't seen that, you, you feel free to check it out. Um, some of the episodes are members only. So upgrade to become a member and you can see everything. Uh, so basically we can create a admin um, user by m modifying the role when we're when we are creating the user. Uh, so I'm gonna close out the server and then do a Rails C just so that we have a, a user to kind of like run through the app and see where we're at. Uh, user equals user.create and then a name Zach Siri and uh, email is Zach at codemy.net password is one one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's good enough. And then the role is going to be admin. All right. So that created the user. There's one more thing we need to do, which is we need to uh, confirm, make sure the confirm data is populated. Otherwise, it's not going to be considered confirmed. So what we're going to be doing is uh, user equal dot confirmed at equals um, time dot now and user.save. All right, so um, that gives us kind of like a starting point for the user. Uh, so if I now go in and log in, so Zach at codemy.net and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, I should be able to log in. Oh, well, I have to start my server first, Rails S. And we're gonna go back to here and then type in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, submit. And we should be logged in and then there we go. And we can go into the admin area to create a post. So I'm gonna click new post over here, test post, click save. Um, it takes us to the post uh, index page in the public. So if we go back to admin, we'll be able to see the post and we can then, uh, whoops, sorry. If I click edit here, I can click publish. And then now we can see it in the our landing page. So that's kind of like, so, you know, we can make a comment. So that's a, a good starting point. So what we need to do is the first thing we're going to need to do is we need to add a seed file so that, you know, when someone clones down like a developer or someone clones down this project, they don't have to go through the motion of creating, um, you know, they, they, they're not going to know like, oh, what's going on here? Like, how do I even get started? Uh, you know, like, so what we need to do is populate the seed file and that's kind of like give um, our developers who clone our project, like whether you're sharing this project with other members of your team, the seed file is going to give you um, kind of like a starting point for them um, where they can just see and like, oh, well, you know, I just need to use this user and then I'll be able to log in and then test out the app. You know, that's generally what developers do when they inherit a new project is test it out and click through it and understand, make it like try to understand what the project's all about. Um, so that's the first thing we're gonna do. So we're gonna do user.create and we can do something like name, uh, admin and email can be admin at codemy.net and password one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and uh, role whoops, is um, admin. And uh, we need to do a confirm that. So uh, confirmed at time.now. So let's try this out. Uh, how do we actually run this, right? Uh, you know, we can run uh, what's called a, so let me just clean this up a tad. Uh, we can call a, a rake db seed, and that's basically gonna set up everything for us. So I'm gonna head over into the console and close this out and pretend as if we didn't have a database. So rake db uh, drop. So we're gonna drop the database and then uh, we're gonna run rake db seed. And that will, okay, so rake db uh, setup. And then rake db seed. 
All right, so that pretty much ran uh, the seed script. So let's go into the console and see what happens. So I'm gonna do user equals user dot first. And we see that, you know, right away we have a user that we can just use to get started. So we don't have to run through the motion of, you know, setting up this user every time we inherit a project. We can just run rakedb seed and we're good to go uh, in terms of with the project. So I wanna take a pause here for this episode. Uh, it's getting a little bit long, but I wanna talk a little bit about what we're gonna be covering in the Rails Foundation. Uh, we're gonna be covering everything basically, you know, that's I consider foundation. Like we're gonna do background jobs, you know, like for example, we haven't done image uploading. We're gonna do that. And we're gonna have some kind of background job that does something um, that updates our database or something. Uh, and then, you know, basically the focus is to not go into JavaScript. So everything that's considered Rails foundation, that's not going to do JavaScript. So we're not going to use active storage to do like direct upload to AWS S3. In this series, in this uh, Rails foundation series, we're going to do that in the Rails intermediate series. And, you know, in that series, we're going to cover everything that's related to JavaScript, like Webpacker and, uh, you know, in, in, the sco in the context of Rails. So we're not going to do our own custom like React app or anything like that. We're just going to focus on the Rails context, the JavaScript in the Rails context. So Webpacker, um, Active Storage, um, you know, uh, Action Cable, um, Stimulus JS, and you know all the stuff that you know now is becoming a part of Rails, um, the standard. That's what we're going to be covering in the Rails Intermediate series. Um, so yeah, so that wraps up this episode. This is a free episode. Uh, so check out our entire Rails lineup uh, if you love Rails like I do. Um, and we have a ton more content coming up, um, which I'm going to slowly reveal as we have time to produce them. Um, and so yeah, check out our website, become a member for just nine bucks a month to get access to all of our content. And uh, with that, I want to wrap up this episode. I'll see you guys in the next one.